If you're a guy going on a cruise, you might be wondering what to pack and what to wear, especially when it comes to those cruise line dress codes. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifeballcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now I know packing and getting ready for a cruise can sometimes seem a little bit overwhelming. After all, in contrast to a land vacation, when you're on the ship, you really do want to have everything that you need. Now on this channel, I've done a lot of packing videos and cruise outfit videos, mainly geared towards women. However, men need packing help too, and I have had a lot of requests for this video. And by the way, I do cruise with my husband and my son, so during this video, I will share a lot of what they bring for a cruise and some mistakes that they've made when it comes to packing for a cruise. Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let's get started. What to pack for a cruise for men. Now in this video, I'm mostly going to be talking about warm weather cruises. So Caribbean cruises, Bahamas cruises, even a little bit of Mediterranean and Bermuda cruises. However, I will touch on a little bit of the Canada, New England or Alaska cruises. However, I do believe that those cooler destinations really deserve their own dedicated video. I will have an Alaska a video coming out soon and I will leave a Canada New England video that I have made already I will leave that as a resource linked down in the description below this video so let's start off first with a clothing that you're going to want to pack for a cruise I will also share what not to pack and what accessories you will want to bring for a cruise so when it comes to the clothing that you'll want to pack for your cruise, something that you should know is that cruises overall are much more casual than they were even five years ago. So you don't have to stress too much, but you still do want to be prepared. And a good thing to start with is take a look at the dress code of your particular cruise line to get a bit of an idea as to what is expected. Now, just to let you know, a few years ago, dress codes were really more enforced. These days, dress codes on many different cruise lines are more of a suggestion rather than something that is strictly enforced. But that doesn't mean that there aren't any rules or some things that are really frowned upon. So I will let you know the realities in this video. Now, the typical dress code for most cruise lines for a seven night cruise will include two dress up nights. Sometimes they're called formal nights, elegant night, evening chic nights, dress your best nights. But basically those are the evenings that you would plan your outfits to dress up a little bit more. The other five evenings are either going to be casual or smart casual. So what should you wear for formal or dressy nights? And do you need a suit or a tuxedo? So firstly, these days you really don't need a tuxedo because formal nights are really not black tie formal. The exception is Cunard, which is a formal and very traditional cruise line. So they do have a much more strict dress code than other cruise lines. Now for formal nights on most cruise lines, you might want to pack a suit with a dress shirt and dress pants, either with or without a tie, or you might want to wear a dress shirt dress pants, and a sports coat. Now in cruise lines like Princess, Holland America, and Celebrity, you'll probably see a greater number of people dressing in suits than you will on Royal Caribbean or on Carnival or on Norwegian Cruise Line. Now just something to mention, Norwegian Cruise Line is freestyle cruising, so they don't have an official dress code, although they do have a couple of guidelines, which I will mention later on in the video. And if you're on Virgin Cruise Line, they have no dress code at all. Now, by the way, if you don't want to bring a suit on your cruise, a nice pair of pants and a nice shirt or dress shirt is going to be just fine. Now, when it comes to the casual and smart casual dress codes on a cruise, you can basically wear anything that you'd feel comfortable wearing in a nice restaurant at home. So that can include uh, nice dark jeans. So jeans are permitted in the dining rooms on most cruise lines. The only thing that you should remember is they shouldn't have holes in them. They shouldn't be dirty. So they should be nice jeans. You can wear a nice shirt. You can wear a shirt with a collar. So it's really a good idea. Pack a few polo style shirts. Those can be worn in the evening in the main dining room or in the restaurants, but they can also be worn during the day as well. And if you're on a warm weather cruise, you might want to pack some chinos or khakis. Those look really nice, even with a polo shirt in any of the restaurants in the evening. Now, if you're on a cooler weather cruise, or even if you're not, you can bring a long sleeve shirt, you can bring a light sweater and something also, not only for the dining room, but just on the cruise itself is don't forget to bring a sweatshirt or a hoodie or a zip up jacket because it can sometimes get 
cool and that is something really good to have especially for the outer decks in the evening. Now when it comes to what to wear and pack for the day, cruise ships are really casual during the day so you can wear athletic shorts and a t-shirt. You might want to bring some classic shorts if you're walking around the cruise ship. A polo style shirt can be really nice, especially if you're going into the ports, but a t-shirt is just fine as well. Now you might be wondering if you can wear shorts to the main dining room or restaurant in the evening time. Now, some of the cruise lines will actually say no shorts in their dress code. So that is something to watch for. However, many cruise lines nowadays do actually allow it, even if they do sometimes frown upon it. So Royal Caribbean and Carnival, I think that you'll see shorts a little bit more often in the main dining room on at least those casual nights on their cruise ships. However, it is less common on more traditional lines. And it is possible if it is in the dress code that the maitre d' can actually turn you away and ask you to go change. So again, always make sure that you do pack at least one pair of pants just in case. Now, by the way, just to mention, the dress codes really only apply to those specialty restaurants and the main dining room. So if you are heading to the buffet or if you're going to the poolside grill or grabbing a slice of pizza, you can really wear whatever you want. Okay, let's move on to what to pack and what not to forget. And by the way, a couple of these things I mentioned out of experience in our own family. So firstly, consider bringing some sportswear. So that could mean shorts and a t-shirt to go to the gym. But even if you're not somebody who regularly goes to the gym, it's so nice to walk on a cruise ship early in the morning time or even after dinner. So you might find that you want some comfortable clothing to do that. Now, something else to remember is to bring closed toed shoes or really running shoes or sneakers are going to be fine. There are a lot of activities that you might wanna participate in on the cruise or even when you're in port and it is going to require you to have comfortable closed toed shoes. Now, something else that you wanna bring and I think it is something that a lot of men sometimes forget but it is socks. So you'll need dress socks if you are wearing dress shoes, but you'll also wanna maybe bring some loafer socks. So if you are wearing loafers, you'll wanna bring no-show socks or loafer socks. And of course, you'll want some regular athletic socks as well. Now still for the daytime, make sure to pack a baseball cap. Now, if you forgot your baseball cap, which you can probably see that my husband has before, you can always pick one up in the ports or even on the ship. Now, by the way, if you're going on a cruise and you wanna stay organized with cruise packing lists and more, I do have the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner. Now, the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner is a 47 page downloadable printable cruise planner that you can use to stay organized for your cruise from the time that you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation. Now it includes cruise packing lists for both men and women, shore excursion planning forms, hotel reservation forms, and more. If you are interested in seeing what's included in the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner, I will leave all of the information linked down below in the description of this video in case you are interested in checking it out. Now you wanna be prepared for the sun, so make sure that you do bring sunscreen. A reef safe sunscreen is ideal, especially if you're going to any of those Caribbean ports. And you may wanna bring an SPF lip balm as well. Now, even if you're going on a warm weather cruise, consider bringing a light jacket, even a light rain jacket, or a sweatshirt. Oftentimes it can be a bit breezy out on deck or it can be a little bit cool in the morning or the evening time. And you never know when the weather will just change. So it's always good to have at least one sweatshirt or a warmer top. Make sure to pack pool wear. So you'll wanna probably have at least two or three bathing suits for a seven night cruise. Sometimes what happens is you wear a bathing suit and it doesn't quite dry by the next day. So you don't wanna put on a wet bathing suit. It's not very comfortable. So make sure to bring, well, at least two. Now, something else that you wanna bring, of course, are sandals or slides. So basically shoes to wear at the pool or at the beach. Clothing for theme nights. Now, not every cruise will have a theme night, but it is possible to have a white night. So if there is a white night on your cruise, something you'll wanna do is just bring a white shirt. There could be, if you're on Virgin Voyages, they have scarlet night which is wear something red. So bring a red polo or a red t-shirt. And a lot of cruise lines have a Caribbean deck party or a Hawaiian theme night. So you might wanna bring a Hawaiian shirt as well. Now, by the way, those Hawaiian style shirts are very in style these days, and they make a really great light shirt to wear, especially on those hot days in cruise ports. Now, I know a lot of people ask me or Frank about the shirt that he is wearing. So I will leave that shirt as well as other items that I do talk about in this video and cruise essentials. I will leave them linked down below in the description of this video. Now, when it comes to shoes, something that's very versatile, both for during the day and for the evening and pretty comfortable are Sperry's. So you may wanna bring Sperry's or even Hey Dudes shoes on a cruise. 
And of course, I think this goes without saying, but don't forget to pack sleepwear and undergarments. Now, even though cruises are pretty casual, there are a couple of things that you just shouldn't wear on a cruise and you should leave them at home. So one of them is don't bring any offensive slogan style shirts. So no graphic offensive t-shirts. Something else uh, not to wear on a cruise is you can wear a tank top if you want, if you're out by the pool, but you won't be able to wear swimwear, tank top, flip flops, any of that. You won't be able to wear that into the restaurants on the cruise. Accessories that you'll wanna bring on your cruise. Now this is not an exhaustive list, but these are some of the basics that you'll probably want to bring on your cruise. So one of them is a cruise lanyard. So the cruise lanyard is going to be able to be, well, a place that you can hold your cruise card. Now, my son really likes to have a lanyard, even if he does put it in his pocket. However, my husband really prefers the cruise card holder. So it's up to you. I am gonna leave both of them linked down below in the description of this video in case you are interested in checking them out. A toiletry bag. So something really important to bring on a cruise is a toiletry bag. Now you'll wanna have, of course, your shaving, items, any of your other personal items, you want to make sure they're all there. Now it's a good idea to bring one that is a hanging toiletry bag. There's not really a lot of room in the bathrooms on cruise ships. So if you can hang that up on a hook and then fold it and put it away or even leave it there all week, that really is going to save you a lot of space. An electronics charging bag organizer. Now these days, many of us have many different chargers and wires and boxes. So it's a good idea to bring something along that you have everything organized. So this is one that we use on our cruises. A passport wallet. Now you might wanna bring a passport wallet like this where you can have two or three or even four passports all in one and you have room for your documentation. You might wanna bring a single passport holder. You might want to bring a neck wallet. Now, if you are cruising somewhere like the Mediterranean, having a neck wallet or a money belt is a really good, safer option. A power bank or a portable charger. So of course you wanna make sure that you do have a portable charger for when you're traveling. But as well, if you take a lot of pictures and a lot of video on shore excursions, you're going to wanna make sure that your phone is always charged. Now, if you're going on any shore excursions that include water, so beach excursions or snorkeling excursions, consider bringing a waterproof phone lanyard. That's a really good place to not only put your phone, but also to keep your identification, your cruise card, and some money. Water shoes. Now, water shoes are optional, but depending on the activity that you are doing in the cruise port, you might really want to bring these. We did an excursion in Virgin Gorda. We absolutely needed water shoes to be able to climb over the large rocks. Uh, we did an excursion at Duns River Falls in Jamaica, absolutely needed these. And at some beaches, we've been happy to have them as well because sometimes there are these little rocks and it really does protect your feet. Now, if you're somebody who loves looking at wildlife, if you're on an Alaskan cruise, but even if you're on a Caribbean cruise or a California, Mexico cruise, you will perhaps see some marine life and it's great to have some lightweight travel binoculars. A refillable water bottle with many more cruise lines going plastic free, a water bottle really should be on a cruise packing list for many of us. To be sure to pack at least one pair of inexpensive sunglasses and you may want to consider even bringing some snorkeling gear if you plan on snorkeling on your cruise, especially if you plan on snorkeling right from the beach, it's a lot cheaper to buy your own snorkeling gear than to rent it when you do arrive at the beach. Downy wrinkle release. Something that surprises a lot of people, especially new cruisers, is the fact that you're not going to have irons in your cruise ship cabins. They are actually a fire hazard. Now, in some cases, there are little laundrettes that you can go and you can use an iron and an ironing board on some cruise ships, but many of them don't have them. So something that you can do instead is bring a little travel size bottle of downy wrinkle release just spray your clothing. You can even use some shower steam as well, and that will help to get the wrinkles out if you don't wanna send them to be pressed. A non-surge protected power bar. Now I'm not gonna go on and on about more cruise essentials in this video, but this one I did think was worth mentioning because there just aren't on most cruise ships, there just aren't enough electric outlets or USB outlets in the cruise ship cabin. So you'll wanna bring a non-surge protected power bar. You can't bring the same kind of power bar that you might have at home um, that is surge protected. Those are banned on cruise ships and will be confiscated. Now I'm gonna leave all of the information about the Lifewell Cruise Ultimate Cruise Planner linked down below in the description of this video. And I'd love to hear from you. What are some of the tips and recommendations that you have for men that are packing for a cruise? And please let me know as well when you're going on your cruise and any questions that you may have, please let me 
me know down in the comments below. Now, if you are interested in more cruise essentials, I will leave a video right after this one in case you do want to check that out. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.